Zan Monroe, what's up, baby? Brother Brian, you're doing all right? Man, I'm going to tell you something. Life, life is good. I, Zan, I was thinking about today. I usually talk to you two or three days a week. I have not talked to you since uh, we got finished last Tuesday, man. Tuesday you, know, night. you had a big week. I did. It's been a big week. We, I uh, saw something about uh, you doing some training with Caldwell Banker. Yep, I, I just finished uh, doing a um, uh, four sessions with Coal Banker Gosley in Shreveport, Louisiana. It's a course that I teach called Recharge. Recharge. And it, it's 12 hours online, and it's, it's literally everything a realtor needs to know to be successful. Um, this is a great company down there in Shreveport. And they had survived the snowstorm. Everybody talks about Texas. Well, it turned and came right through northern sure Louisiana. And um, they had uh, 10 inches of snow and then four inches of ice and, you know, just a mess. And that was the week before the course started. And I called and I said, do y'all need to delay? He said, oh, heck no. Um, by next week, it'll be 80 degrees. And sure enough, it was. So, but the fun part is it's the eight things – Eight, eight things that agents need to succeed. Before we do the last class, we did Tuesday and Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday, um, two weeks back to back. Before the last one, I got a text from one of the, the agents in the class, and she said, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm going out of the country. And I didn't think anything else about it. So when the class was over, they write up their critique and then they take a picture of it. They, eat, they text it to me and they text it to their uh, uh, manager. And um, about 30 minutes after all the texts came through, I got one last one and I looked at it and it was the picture that I posted on Facebook. And she said, I'm in Cancun. Wow. And I was able to take your entire class in Cancun thought it was great, you know, the last three hours and all that. So I went home and told my wife. I said, uh, <clears throat> honey, I, I had students from Cancun in my class this week. And I told her the rest of the story. And she said, I'm married to you. And I wouldn't have turned in from Cancun. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Zan, the only thing I can think of is, uh, wouldn't it be a better situation for you to be teaching from Cancun? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can. And, and, you know, everybody keeps coming at me because I've spent years in the classroom and traveling around the United States like you have. I mean, at one point you were on the airplane 20 days of the month. I mean, it's crazy. It was crazy. And now you stop and people keep going, aren't you going to be glad when we get back to classrooms? No, <laughs> because, because I get to go home tonight and Laura's fixing dinner and, I get to sleep in my own bed. Traveling had gotten to be where it wasn't fun. Now I've got somebody trying to hire me to fly this fall and, and speak and I'll go and do a live event. But when you can do live like this, why would you get on an airplane? So just last Friday, you don't know this last Friday, I got my first vaccination for COVID. Uh, my my neighbor is, is a is a wonderful guy. He is a he's a pharmacist with New Hanover Regional, and he uh, he called me and said there's some openings in Jacksonville, and so I went and got that. I got my second shot coming up in April. But the interesting thing is, I got to thinking about it, that my ability to fly and be be present is is there. But here's 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 the other side of that. I'm able to get more done in meetings like this. I uh, also know that the outside distractions that sometimes you, you know, you think about it, if you're talking to a group, Zan, and you do this all the time, you have, let's say you have a hundred people in the room. Somebody drops a book, somebody does this, somebody gets up to go to the bathroom. That distraction, whether it was intentional or not, takes away from this. When I'm looking at you right now, my eyes may not look like that. I'm looking at you on the screen. I thought about that last week. I'm looking at you on the screen. When you and I are, are engaged, I'm engaged in you. And if something happens on the other side of this room, it doesn't distract other people in the room. 
nor does it distract Jews. I, I think the world has changed. The world has changed. Um, and so I, I saw I saw where you finished that group up. And, and is that the same group that you introduced me to about a year ago? I mean, some nice guys. Yeah, Brad and J Jimmy Gosley started that company. Um, uh, and he's uh, he is one of those people, if Jimmy Gosley walked in the room and shook your hand, you trust him. I mean, he's just yeah. that guy. And his son, Brad, is the same way. Brad runs the company. Chris Darwin is their general manager. And uh, I, I think that you uh, – I think you did meet with them. And I think we talked for a little while. I mean, nice guys. They just had some, some questions on how the mortgage rule works, right? So, so, yeah. so I enjoyed that conversation. Hey, real quick, before we get deep in something, I'm going to forget about something. Right. At the end of last week – and, and I know when people watch stuff like this, they watch it in spurts when they have time. And, and uh, But at the end of last week, we actually made an announcement that we were struggling on some things. And, and yeah. the thing we're struggling on is that we, we needed to figure out what we're going to name this. Zan, the Zan and Brian hour <laughs> is not really what, what, what we wanted to call it because you and I will talk about real estate. We'll talk about mortgage banking. We'll talk about fishing life but we're going to talk about fishing baby we're going to talk yeah. about the outdoors and and when you look at that and so i just want to remind the, the folks that are and those that are subscribed uh i think the first subscriber was my mother and so thank you again jane for, for watching <laughs> but if, if 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 we if we're looking for what what we should call this we want it to be you used the word whimsical and that's run through my mind a thousand times right and so what we're going to do uh, between now and March 30th, if, if, if somebody can help us find a good name for this, we choose that name. Uh, not only are we going to do a $250 gift card, uh, you can get two books from uh, Zan signed uh, books. And actually, I happen to have your books midnight, two of them, Uncle Adrian and Seven Lessons for Success. Great reads. And uh, so you can get a copy, two copies of those, a copy of each of those signed, a $250 gift card. Just email us. I'll have the email addresses on the bottom of the screen, zan at zanmonroe.com, brian at integrator.com. But we would love for you to help us figure out what to name it. So I wanted to hit that at the beginning, Zan, yep. because, you know, t attention spans, man. That's right. And and right now the best thing we got is hanging out with Brian and Zan. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's, that's the best name we've got. Hey, look, and, 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 go ahead. You got on me last week because I asked you a bunch of questions. You said, I talk too much, but you talk better than I do. Reading books. Mm -hmm. And I love to tell this on you, so I'm going to get you to tell it so they can hear it. Okay. You told me once, you said, Zan, I have a 26 to 1 advantage over my competition. Mm -hmm. That the average business executive in the United States reads one business book a year. Mm -hmm. You read one every other week. Every other week. Explain that. So when you are today's technology, right? You can, you can, and I cheat. I was actually trying to find, I don't have my reading glasses on, so I can't really find it on you my can put them on right it. now. All right. we're, but we're I know it's on here. I promise you it's on here. It's, uh, uh, I used, I used audible and, and yeah. the thing for me, especially as much as I was on the road pre COVID I'm riding on the road. I'm on an airplane. I'd have my AirPods in and, and I, I knew that I wanted to listen to a book. Not every book I listened to, by the way, was one that, that sometimes I learned what not to do. Right. But what I discovered is that the average American after high school, they may read one book a year, but they're probably not going to finish it. Well, I, I knew that if I wanted to have an advantage, against my competition, whether it's negotiations, Brian Tracy. I mean, right there, you start thinking about this stuff. It's, it's amazing how when you're listening to them talk, and I love to read the books that are written or read by the author because they're going to ad lib. And Grant Cardone's notorious. He'll be reading. He goes, you know what? The editor told me to say that. This is what I'm actually saying. And he's like, and so it's crazy. And, and, but what I discovered is by doing that, all of a sudden, I'm getting an MBA riding down the road, flying in an airplane. And, and the other side of that, Dan, and, I, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to – okay. here's, here's the other side of that. I'm certain at some point 
and, and you and I, we, we've talked about them in the past. We're going to probably talk about mentors, right? I've, I've shared numerous times, and I even said that to you last week. You, you've always been a mentor to me, whether you knew it or not. But when I'm riding down the road or I'm reading a book by Zam Monroe, I, I read it as if you're talking to me. Right. And so I will never forget, you know, uh, exit 49 on, on uh, I-95 is Highway 53, where there's a rest yes. area right before there, right? So back, back in the day, I had a CD player. I don't know if people still know what those are. I had a CD player, and I had this little thing of, of, from Brian Tracy, and I had all these CDs. So I'd be riding down the road, and I was coming back from South Carolina, and I'm just about to get to my exit. And Brian Tracy said, you can never accomplish something you've never achieved before. You become someone you've never been before. Oh, say that again. You can never accomplish something you have never achieved before. Do you become someone you've never been before? Now, well, well, well I write slow, man. I'm taking notes here. You can, because ne- they're listening. You can, you can never can. achieve something you've never achieved before until you become someone you've never been before. It's deep. Here, let, me deep. Tell, let me tell you what I heard. Yeah, I heard that and I thought, oh, dear Lord. So I was right there at that rest area. So I pulled into <laughs> the rest area and, and you can't with a CD. You have to. I mean, it's not, yeah, you like, gotta it's not like a now you can just kind of slide the dial back. I had to search and find it. And what I actually heard him say was Brian Wright, dude, yeah. you can never accomplish something never achieved before. You become someone you've never been before. Get that through your thick skull that. And so. To me, these guys, when I'm reading them, in the way that I interpret, when they're talking to me, it is them talking to me. I feel like I know Brian Trace. I feel like I know mm-hmm. Grant Cardone because I hear their voice in my head so often mentoring me. But what I do know is, you know, Brian Trace is the one who taught me. <laughs> it's like, he's like, he's like, you know, he called me one day. He said, Brian, no, he's, like, it's, it's, hey, Brian. Like, he's the one who said that an objection is never a no. An objection is a question. It's a request for more information. Yeah. When I learned that, Zan, just by reading his book or listening to his book, when I walk in and I'm in a negotiation, if I'm trying to hire somebody and they say something to me that sounds like an objection, I'm like, that's a great question, Zan. Blah, blah, blah. And my response. They didn't ask me a question, but that's, yeah. that's how I've learned to program my mind through reading these books. And so do I feel like I have confidence? You win with confidence. I have confidence without arrogance is a huge thing, right? So I, or confidence without cockiness. I feel like I have confidence without cockiness is huge. And I feel like I have that confidence when I walk into a room because I've been preparing just in reading. And I know that the guy I'm up against, he has, has not. Oh. So Brian Tracy, the objection is simply a question. A condition is something you can't get around. You may have to peel the onion back through 15 objections to get to what the real condition is. And then you can determine, do we move forward or not? I didn't learn that because I was sitting in a high school class or a college class. Oh, I learned that from a, they don't teach that stuff. I learned that from a dad Lane book riding down I-95. Well, <laughs> so, think about it this way. All education, every bit of education is self-education. Mm-hmm. A teacher is simply a guide down that path, but all education is self-education. Zan, the most and you taught me this. The most successful classes that you've had, and the most successful classes that I've ever, and I hate to use the word taught, it's more of moderate, have been when I have a a, a legal pad and I have I, I know my subject, but I have a list of questions. And I'll ask a question, somebody in the back room will give an answer, and somebody else will follow. All of a sudden, that class begins, as you said, self-educating themselves. Now, we, our job is to have the guardrails in place and keep them in between yeah. the guardrails. But that's, to me, and you taught me that. You taught me that. That's, that's the most fun way to, to teach. And, and, Brian, when you – people who, who never stop and think about stuff like this – this book is 180, no, 230 pages. That's five years of concentrated thought that you can read in an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, spread it over a week if you want to, but you know you can you can go through that book in a couple hours. So you can get, you know, 
a mind that has focused on a topic for years condensed all that information in a couple of hours. And um, you have an advantage. You say 26 to one advantage over your competition. Um, the truth is a great percentage of uh, America, last time I got this statistic, it was from the National uh, American Literacy Council said, 15% uh, of the US population never reads another entire book after they leave formal education. The rest yeah, of them. I've seen that stat. I've seen that stat. Yeah. And, and, and go ahead. I'm sorry. I meet people all the time and, and books come up and, and they'll say something like, well, I, I've never been a big reader. That tells me right there they have not read a book in forever. And um, did you ever know my mother? No. I actually, Zane, I, I was thinking about some things the other day. Listen, I know that, that a lot of you have no idea what Eastern Cumberland County looks like. But there was <laughs> Eastover, where oh, yeah. Zan's from. We're it east was, of the Cape Fear River. Yeah, east of the river. And Zan, I mean, Eastover was the classy group. And I, I grew up in Stedman, which was getting a little bit closer to Sampson County. I was three miles from Alterville, right? <laughs> and so those two groups uh, both were, were very Southern, very, very Southern. Uh, but they were, uh, there was always this little Armstrong and Stedman, you know, there was always this little different thing. But I was thinking that there were, there was a, there was a time, uh, uh, with the Warrens and several of those families I met and i there's no doubt in my mind that I met them, that I met them. Cause you had the, you, you used to tell a story about uh, her in the book mobile. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that was, she that would, was, uh, she, that she ingrained was, that see, in you at an age, brother. Do what? She ingrained that into you at an early age, I believe. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. When, when, um, see, I'm a lot older than you are. Um, the bookmobile would come around to my Aunt Margaret's house, and you knew Aunt Margaret. Yeah. And she had her bake shop, and um, she'd call around the neighborhood and say, the bookmobile is here, which is a big bus looking thing filled with, books but it had air conditioning and see in the middle of the summer air conditioning was cool i mean it was really cool literally some people will get that on the way home after this oh uh, but we'd go over there and mama would limit you to how many books you could get but you could get two or three and then um, you know she'd get a stack of books this was after my father died and um, uh she was trying to figure out how to make it in the business world and finance and all that sort of thing. She would read those books. Well, that became a lifelong habit to read. When she became older, um, she lost her sight through macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it actually has to do with cigarette smoke. My father was a smoker. He died with lung cancer. But the eye doctor has told me, he said, macular degeneration is a direct result of inhaling cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So um, mother lost her ability to read. We bought her big format books and then a you know, big magnifying glass, none of that. Finally, we discovered audio books. Mm -hmm. So we would get cassette tapes uh, from the North Carolina um, Library for the Blind. And they would they'd send books. And mother had always read business books and finance and philosophy and religion. Um, well, they couldn't get all that a lot, but then they had novels. And mother had never been a reader of novels. So we had her a little cassette player. She'd sit in her blue chair. Now she lived alone. She could see just enough to, to make it, but she lived alone. There was many a time I went out there with the kids. And I'd get to the house and you'd hear mama in there with her tape going and you'd knock on the door and come on in and, and she'd fidget around for a few minutes and she'd go, Zan, um, um, are y'all going to be here? Well, well yeah, mama. I well, I'm story, in this man. special. I gotta I'm, story. I, I'm at, that's exactly right. I'm in a special. I'm, 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 they're just about to finish this chapter. Just give me a few minutes. Well, you know, you got to take the youngins out in the yard. Mom and Fisher. 10 or 15 minutes later, she'd come out. Ooh, that was good. Um, when she passed away, the North Carolina uh, 
Library for the Blind sent us a letter that said in the last 18 months of her life, she listened to 400 wow. audio books. Now, if you got listeners out there tonight, there's no excuse not to read. There's no excuse not to expand your, your world. And, and I'm going to come back to your quote. That was awesome. You'll never accomplish something that you've never accomplished until you become someone you have been that you've never been. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what life's all about. I mean, you've got to expand your knowledge base throughout your entire life and, and never stop. Then. Which brings, brings me to fly fishing. All right. Um, as you know, I've got a little place in the mountains of North Carolina and I've been fly fishing for 30 years, but I have never studied the sport. I grew up, we had a pond on the farm and my daddy had a fly rod and somehow I learned how to cast it. Never had any classes. Um, we would fly fish for brim, a little popping bug. Um, I've been to the mountains of North Carolina. I've been on exotic trips down the Rogue River in Oregon and fly fished uh, uh, for tarpon and we saw one that on thing scared me it rolled right at the boat <laughs> that was a big fish and uh, i mean he just appeared at the boat um didn't catch him but i've never studied this sport and what i realize now is it's time for me to study now you study fishing a lot deeper than i do but you have pushed me into this. This is going to be your fault Good. because I got to keep up with you in my knowledge base of fly fishing for trout in the Eastern North or Western North Carolina uh, mountains. So when you come up there, I can guide you because every time I fish with you at the coast of North Carolina, you guide me. I mean, explain what those spools behind you are. Yeah. Those. This, they call this a yo-yo, and it's really just something to keep your rigs neat, right? So what I do, uh, I like the planer fish. So I've got different size planers, uh, and so long story short, a planer, it, it creates resistance against the water and forces your rig down. So you can fish different depths of the water column. So I may have six rods out, I got two on top, I got one at 30 feet, I got one at 50 feet, whatever. They're different different levels. And so what I do with the yo-yos, I pre-rig them where I can tie. I've got exactly, on every one of my rigs, I've got a 100-pound test, and I have exactly 100 feet of line. So when I hook this, when I, when I get out there, I'll take this, this, this drone spoon off, set it in the water, it'll start peeling off, I hook this to the planer, drop it down, get my line out, then I move to the next one, and when I'm done, I just wind it back up on my yo-yo. So this weekend, I was getting, starting to get them sit, Zane, it was 70 degrees today. Oh, yeah. Uh, it is time. We're getting close, baby. So I was like, this weekend, I started getting, getting my rig set up uh, for, for that. And it's a uh, – uh, I'm really – I, I got to do it. Can I do a quick shout-out on something? Yeah, but before you do, can we do one of these from, from, the, from the ocean? Can we I, got, I got something for you on that. All right. What you got? Look at this. So – King mackerel, their favorite bait is a ribbon. Yeah. Finding and catching ribbon fish here is not that, that easy to do, right? So there is a company in Harker's Island that I found called Almost Alive Lures. Dude, I got 18-inch ribbon fish. Look how lifelike that thing looks, right? I am so I am I got so many lures, I'm so excited about fishing. <laughs> This one, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have them drone spoons down, but I'm gonna have this is this is a sweet sweet bait, and I, I'm I'm very excited. You need to come with me. We need to film whether or not this works. But right. almost a lot of lures. I mean, they they don't even know my name, but I'm gonna tell you this right here. This thing is beautiful. This thing is beautiful. And I, I'm well, so excited about getting those set up. Well, you make lures, and you have a little lure company called Come On Lure. Come on, come on. And uh, that's burnt. For those of you who don't know, if Brian is ever speaking live, if anybody in the audience knows him, you'll hear somebody go, come on. <laughs> he gets all wound up and all excited about what he's doing. Come on. We had a, we had a, do it too. We had a preacher 
that used to come and he goes, if you agree with me, say, uh-huh. And everybody go, uh-huh. And so the come on, when we say come on, it's the same thing. If you agree with me, say come on. And uh, yeah. you'll, you'll hear people, it's funny, Zane. You'll be sitting there talking, and all somebody go, come on. You're like, yeah, that's right, man. That's right. <laughs> hey, look, when you back down, to, I got these, these new ones came in today. This, this size here, and I don't mean to get sidetracked. You just trigger thought. These are the big ones, right? My small ones just came in. We're going to be painting these up. I want you to come paint some with me. Hey, Zane, let me... Uh, let me mention something to you while we're on that subject. All right. The last weekend of March, okay, I think it's March 27th, 26, 27, 28. Our good friend, my, my best friend on the planet, you hear me talk about him all the time, Terry Fisher. Terry, Terry Fisher. Birthday. Every year on his birthday, we normally go out of town and we go fly fishing. In fact, the last time the three of us were fly fishing, it was in Smoke Mount Campground, and it was the same weekend that, that Terry and I go on our guys' trip. And it's funny, when we go on a guy's trip, we'll fly fish, we'll camp out, but we listen to audio books. It's not like your typical, we're we'll listening to audio books on the way, we're we'll listening on the back, like, dude, good trip. You know, so <laughs> I want you to look at your calendar because if, uh, even if we can't go to Western North Carolina, if, if, if you guys aren't ready for that, come to Eastern North Carolina. I'm a, Jennifer's going to be with the mom. Stay here with me. We'll, we'll go fish and uh, we'll, we'll, film, we'll film offshore, man. So to so put that on your calendar, that would be a lot of fun. Maybe by then we'll have a name. Yes. Maybe by then we'll have a name. Now, what's the name of your boat? Inner Gator. Inner, Inner Gator. Gator. Well, maybe we need to name this show Inner Gator. Oh, uh, man. That's, that, I don't, we we got we to gotta figure something out. We'll figure something out. That's a good so, idea. So you've mentioned that Inner a couple Gator times. Fly, man. We'll figure something out. We've, we've mentioned Inner Gator, and you're going to have to explain to the listeners what Inner Gator what your inner gator. I, I wish we could put up uh, a copy of your logo because I just think it's so cool. We'll, uh, explain, explain inner gator. Okay. Uh, you know that I've got to figure out how to get you to quit doing <laughs> what you're doing. You to me every time. Uh, I'm making I'll, you talk, man. I'll be brief. Um, so several years ago, Zan and I were, were talking, and, and it's funny that when you start studying the principles of life, right, we end up coming back to the to really the same things. I'll talk about something. You'll t we talk about it differently, but we're saying, I mean, sometimes it's the same exact topic, right? We're like, I didn't know you were talking about that. But I was trying to figure out what it is that sets us apart when it comes to sales and the life. And so I was like, I don't know. I don't know what that is. So my buddy Terry, we're just talking about, he always called me Gator because we'd go someplace and we'd meet people we didn't even know. We, we, we take these guy trips I was just talking about. We end up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we'll be sitting at a booth at a restaurant. And all of a sudden, we got no lie, this happened one night. We had like 45 people around us by the night. It was over. We knew everybody. I had a graphic designer I met. We met the, the local <laughs> legend and softball player. We just, it was a great time really getting to know people and so we'd go someplace he goes are you gonna let the gator out and i'm like what are you talking about the gator he goes man you're like a gator we gotta let him out and i was like i was like dude the gator's always out and it should always be out with you as well and so as we started really teaching classes about relationships and and finding that inner greatness inside you i couldn't figure out what it was so i was at ruth's chris i had terry meet me in raleigh one night at uh, ruth chris steakhouse we're sitting at the bar just catching up hadn't talked to him in a long time and i was like dude I'm struggling here because I know that it's something and I've got inner gator and gator. I don't know greatness achieved. And he goes, dude, what you do all the time. I'm like, what? He goes, greatness achieved through optimizing relationships. Greatness achieved through optimizing relationships. Everything that you do in life is in everything that I do in life. There's blood, sweat, tears. There's all that stuff. I mean, you work hard to accomplish what you've accomplished, what I've accomplished, what others have accomplished, but also can go back and look at the relationships that I have and been able to leverage, not in a, not in a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not in a manipulative way. Oh, yeah. You leverage that relationship. You help them. They helped you. But relationships in life are key. You talk about it all the time. Oh, yeah. Selling a house or you're in sales. It's not just who 
people don't deal with just who they know, like, and trust, but who they also are in the flow with. How do you have a flow? You have a relationship. And that's when we say, come on, come because on. That, that is the, that's, <laughs> that's what life is about. Yeah. Right? People it, want to it, deal with the folks that they have that relationship with, and they want to help you get to the next level. So inner gator is greatness achieved through relationships, but it's finding that inner greatness through that, through that platform. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Um, I'm working on this book on leadership and the more I study, the more I can tell you, I, I was thinking about this this morning. I got up in the mountains of North Carolina, drove home this morning, four hours. I got to watch the sun come up. Uh, I got to pass, pass the, you know, I was on the Blue Ridge Parkway at, 6 a.m. before the sun came up. No cell signal. Nobody's calling you anyway. The sun's yeah. coming up. Oh, yeah. There's Herds of deer. Point. There were deer in the fields like uh, like cattle. That's awesome. They'd, some of them were laying down. Some were eating. Some were sleeping. And I thought, I was thinking about relationships and actually thinking about talking to you tonight. In every great organization, it's the great people. It's It's the people. It's not the computer software. It's not that your company, Union Home Mortgage. And this is what got me thinking about it. Terry King, I'm going to shout out to her again. Donna. Terry helped us Donna. on our house Terry, up there. Terry's a the banker. You're talking about Donna. I'm sorry. Terry's my real estate. Uh, yeah. Donna is her sister is in the mortgage. Um, and Terry is the realtor. But, um, you know, she sent me a gift this week for, you know, uh, doing business with her. And, and I texted her and I said, it's people like you that make a company great. It's not the other way around. Uh, uh, you don't start with a great company and then go find people. It's the people. It's their relationships. And, and then, like my wife always says, and I'm sure yours does too, Zan, everything you want to do, all the people you need to accomplish anything are around you already. Mm -hmm. It's your relationship. But most of us never think of greatness achieved through optimizing those relationships. I have doctor friends that I ask doctor questions to. You know, you go to dinner and you get them talking about what it's like to be a doctor. I had no idea. Or attorneys or mortgage people or real estate people. You can learn so much from other people. And I have watched you do this in restaurants when the wait staff comes to the table and in just a few questions. They're telling you their entire life history. I mean, I've watched you do this, and it's so much fun. I just sit back because I'm an introvert, you know, and I sit back and watch. And it's just a hoot to watch you do it. Uh, and I teach for those people who are are bad at this sort of stuff. There's only four categories of questions, and it spells Ford F O R D. Family is Family and friends. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your friends. In the South, we would say, how's your mama? Oh, is your how's occupation? Your mom, how's your mom and them? Yeah, how's your mom and them? <laughs> yeah. And it's one word, mom and them. Yeah. <laughs> sort of like M&Ms, but that's a whole, whole other thing. Plain or peanut. Yeah. Oh, is occupation. What do you do for work? Tell me about your job. How do you like it? And all that sort of stuff. Uh, R is for recreation, which everybody has something they do to recreate, whether it's quilting or scrapbooking or golf or, or fishing. fishing or fishing or hunting or golf. And then D is dreams, your future state. Um, my wife's favorite dream question is uh, if we go to dinner with a couple we don't know that well, how did the two of you meet? Mm -hmm. And you can see people go, well, it was you know, a stormy night or a blind date or, you know, whatever. If they, Zan, if they do that, you know, it's going to be a good night. If they, if they are like, well, <laughs> you know, it's a longer night. This is a good yeah. indicator. It's a good barometer too. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, but Laura and I have traveled extensively in my speaking. Uh, she's Italian. So we've been to Italy several times and, and i I know like 17 Italian words, but I can communicate through four you know, about families and pointing to pictures and that sort of stuff. But what you can learn is the key. So your inner gator, next time maybe we'll have a, 
uh, one of your inner gators because that's on the side of his boat, folks. And uh, so when we go fishing, we will. And, and that may not be a bad uh, name for this show, Inner Gator. Greatness achieved through optimizing relationships. But somebody out there will have to tell us what to name this thing. So let me tell you something that you, you said. Uh, Jennifer is a uh, very much an introvert. Right, very much. Yeah. And so we're up until you break the ice, right? Yeah. And so uh, I always tell her, I say, just all you got to do is just ask the question, do you know how much a polar bear weighs? And somebody says, no, how much? I say enough to break the ice. And then you can start the conversation, right? <laughs> but the. the <laughs> oh, that was terrible. It was horrible. But the, 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 truth, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, uh, what I have found. The scary part is I'll go home and tell Laura that. Oh, no, I walk I'm going to have to use that on Jennifer tonight. So the, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is this. When you, when you go to a restaurant, right, and I use this for an example, I always, I don't, I'm, the restaurants I go to, I usually get good service, but I have usually have found my way where I know the owners now. Like even here, we've been here, what, 60, 90 days, I know the owners of the restaurants we go to and I walk in, they're like, Hey Brian, but people, you think about the person that's waiting on you. You don't know what's going on in their world. You don't know they're doing a good job, right? They may have a wonderful life or they may be some things just like anybody. You have some, and when you say, Hey, what brought you to Wilmington? Are you a student? Blah, blah, blah. When you start engaging that conversation, a couple of things happen. Number one, it does something to them. It makes them feel like they matter, right? And people want to matter. I don't care who they are, whether it's sales, family, friends, people want to know that they matter. <laughs> the other thing it does, when I have those type of conversations, I typically have found that my service, gets I'm optimizing that relationship. My service is a little bit better. I get a little bit more of a smile in the service and it's a good thing. Now, the danger side of that is Jennifer says I engage too much and we'll be sitting there trying to have a dinner and the lady wants to come back and tell me the rest of the story of her childhood. And so I have to figure out a way not to do that. But it is, it is to me, it's very important that, and I mean that sincerely, that there's what, 7.3 billion people on this planet? Zane, everybody matters. And I can tell you a lot of people don't feel like they do. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a shame, but this, the younger the generation, the more they depend on this as a communications tool. And this is not how humans communicate. No. The, the invention of this device in the last 20 years? <laughs> I mean, how long have we been texting? I, you know, I don't remember. I just remember the first time I sent a text, I wrote everything out in a paragraph and I was told, don't you know what initials are? Or abbreviations are so I, I don't I don't know it's been that would have been ninety uh, nine two thousand range so twenty years yeah so ten thousand years of evolution did not change in twenty years mm -hmm. humans still want to talk to other humans I tell people all the time Zan, that the lowest form of communication is always going to be email or text a necessary right. evil necessary evil oh yeah. But lowest form. Yeah. The next lowest form is actually what we're doing, but it's a heck of a lot. Or telephone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Then this uh, face to face is always going to win. But this this platform, if there's been any technology that that helps us get back to a quasi face to face, this actually is works pretty good. Yeah, I can deal with it. I can see your body language. I can see if you're laughing or if you're rolling your eyes. Uh, but it's it's a uh, email and text as as necessary as they are. You lose the the enunciations. You lose the. I can say Zan, good to see you. Or I can say Zan, good to see you. You know, we talk about all the time. This it, and saying that you can. If I send a text, you say Zan, good to see you. You'll be like, hey, yeah, he's good to see me. But you can't hear me say, dude, it's been a week since I've talked to you. It's so good to see you. And you see it in my face. There's a lot to be said for that. Well, a great deal of human communication is body language. All, all you have to do is go to a foreign language or foreign country where you don't speak the language. You can communicate. 
you can point, you can smile, you can shuffle, you can, you know, I, I get by. I, I speak, I was, I was walking down the street in a little town called Vicenza, Italy. I was walking down right by myself, coming from, there's a great cathedral there. I was coming down the hill and this Italian came up and he said, uh, uh, buongiorno, and I said, buongiorno, and he started rattling, just JK. And I waited for him to pause and I went, no Italian, English. He started again. I said, no Italian, English. Ah, no Italian. So he walks on. To, then he stops, turned around, came back, Española? In other words, <laughs> can, can you say it in I was like, no, I'm a Southern boy, and English is my second language. I had that same problem in New York. <laughs> <laughs> they, they couldn't understand you either. They couldn't understand me there either, brother. <laughs> Yeah, I was teaching in New Hampshire once and I, I started the day and I said, look, if, uh, you know, if y'all have trouble with the Southern accent, just, uh, just, um, slow me down and, and ask me and from the back of the room, this guy goes, Oh heck, we're only getting every other word back here. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long day. So, Oh, Brian, this has been good. Mm -hmm. Should we do this again next week? I hope so. Uh, I, think I, we should, I, I think we should do it from the trout stream. I think we ought to do it from the boat, from the, the swamp, which is through that wall outside. Yeah, Zan, I, I really, uh, I, I'm, I've been thinking about uh, how fun it would be to have, and, and again, I, I said it last week, and I'll say it again tonight, that, you know, you and I had him, I mean, it was, come on, hey, Zan, and that we haven't talked since last Tuesday. I mean, I think we've had three text messages, and that was just, how's your week going? And so these these type of conversations, we both get very excited about, and, and, I, and I enjoy them. But how much fun, and I, and I mean, I love having fun. You know that. We talked about recreation and recreation last week. I used that this week. Uh, be sitting on a boat for – Already got the yo-yos out, the lines are out, planes are out, and you and I are just sitting there having a conversation. All of a sudden, one of the lines just starts peeling off. That would be fun to me. And and guys, I'll tell you a quick story. Zan and I, it was October 17th, 2019. October 18th, 17th. Zan, Zan and I played, he went with me to an NBA event. He was speaking oh, yeah. at the NBA event. NBA. Mortgage Bankers Association, Mortgage not Bankers NBA Club. basketball player. Yeah. Uh, and so we're at, we're at this event, and I had Zan go play golf with me. Uh, we thought it was Captain's Choice when we get out there and his individuals. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. We hit a drive, and everybody plays on a shot. Well, Zan uh, always tells me that he's not a good golfer, but he, the last hole, he hold it out from like a – I don't know. I think it was like 80 yards. Now the story is like 227, but it was. Oh, a, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it gets, I'm further it away every time. I'm going to one on a par five by the time next year. <laughs> but, but we had a great time there. But the day before, Zan, myself, and my cousin, we went 72 miles straight out Mason Berlin offshore, right? So we're fishing, and Zan loves driving my boat. Yeah. We got a, we got a massive Wahoo on that day. Zan's turning the wheel. He's being the wheel. I'm the gaff guy. We got the line guy. What a great day that was. The only regret I have on that is it wasn't on video. That was a great fish. I mean, that was a, a big wahoo. He ate good, but that was a lot of fun. If we can do that's that. right, we came back and cooked that 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 yeah, night. We did. That's right. You stayed when we cooked it yep. that night. We cooked we him that night. And, uh, I also caught that big towel fish that we cooked, and we compared it to the wahoo <laughs> or sand towel. The wahoo was so much better. But it was that was a that was a fun day. We need to do that again, and we need to share some recipes. Yeah, well, we can do that too. We can do that too. Yeah, you got to come. You got to come eat them with me because I'm sitting there eating them. If I say, "Oh yeah, this is good," <laughs> I got to have somebody else say, "Oh yeah, this is good." Yeah, you have to have <laughs> two opinions. Like, wow, it's really <laughs> <laughs> everybody likes cardboard, right? Hey, look, I hope you got any big events this week. What you got going on? Um. No, I, I don't. I don't have any speaking events. I don't have anything teaching out there in the universe. I, I was trying to think of what my week, my week is a bunch of meetings. 
And uh, none of them, I can promise you, none of them are going to be as much fun as this one. Um, except now the ACC tournament is this weekend. You reminded me of that. So I know I'm wearing basketball. Carolina colors. Uh, a friend of mine sent me this shirt. That's why I got it on. But a, a, I am, uh, I'm an NC State guy. You're an NC State guy. You went to yeah. NC State, dude. What went to NC what State. But I'm taking up, you know, I've been a Duke basketball fan. My son converted me, but we'll have to talk about that. I played tennis for NC State, and um, it, it was a good time. So I was there with David Thompson. I watched him score I've got, 60 uh, points. I've got a signed Skywalker. I've got a signed basketball. He spoke at an NBA event, Mortgage Bankers Association, and he gave me a basketball. I think it's upstairs in my office, a basketball that he signed for me. So – I am. Uh, I have to show that to you next time. I can't do like he did. I mean, his fingers went around. It's like holding. Oh, yeah. It's like me holding a tennis ball, right? But oh, yeah. so um, I hope that your week's good. And guys, I hope that you'll help us find a, a good name for this. I have nothing major going on except Jennifer has a major milestone birthday this week. And so, even though it's going to be seventy some degrees on Saturday, and what a beautiful day to go fish. Um, I would much rather be celebrating her birthday here with some friends. There you go. And next week we'll tell that story. I look forward to that. Zan, yeah, always good to see you, brother. My Make pleasure. Week, man. Next week. See you, brother.